This tutorial goes into characteristics of polynomial functions. So in 1.1, we talked about what a polynomial function was. Now what we're going to do is we're talking about more of the features of their graphs. So let's start off with a really quick warm-up. So how do we distinguish if these two table of values are linear, quadratic, cubic, or quartic functions? What we're going to do is we're going to find the finite differences, and if they're all the same, then that gives us an idea of what type of a function they are. So you take the first differences by taking the y value from the bottom, and you subtract the y value from the top. So 4 minus 6 gives you negative 2, and so on. This guy right here has all of the first differences the same. That means it's a linear. So first differences represents an x to the power of 1 graph, which is a linear. If I take a look at the second one, it's not a linear because none of the first differences are the same. And it's not a quadratic or x to the power of 2 graph because none of the second differences are the same. It's not a cubic because none of the um, third differences are the same. So it's not an x cubed graph. But it is an x to the power of 4 graph because all of these fourth differences are constant. So this guy is a quartic function. Okay, so this kind of idea, I just want you to keep in the back of your mind as we go on. We're going to go back to it in a little bit. Okay, so some terminology for you to take away. Um, let's talk about local max and mins, absolute max and mins, turning points, and points of inflection. Okay, so local max and mins and absolute max and mins. What's the difference? An absolute max and min means what is the very lowest, very highest points of the graph. This is the absolute minimum. But if you take a look, since there's arrows that indicate this graph goes up forever, there is no absolute maximum for this graph. However, if these arrows were gone and the graph actually stopped at these two points, then that means that these two points would be the absolute maximum or the highest points of the graph. If you take a look at the middle, there is some stuff going on. So that indicates something about this guy. Right here, you kind of see like a para parabola or a parabolic shape. And at the very bottom, we've always learned that this was a minimum. But since it's not the absolute minimum, this is considered to be a local minimum. This one right here is like a parabola, but upside down. So when that happened, we had a very highest point. So this guy right here is a maximum, but because it's not the absolute maximum, it is considered to be a local maximum. Now, any of these peaks are called turning points. So turning points are maximums or minimums, and it's where the function stops increasing or decreasing. So in other words, when you're decreasing, 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 and then it stops, and it starts to go the other way, increasing, then that point right there is a turning point. Increasing, 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 and then it stops, and that goes to a decreasing. So where it changes from increasing to decreasing, or the other way around, you're going to get these peaks, and those peaks are considered to be turning points. Now points of inflection, those are more discussed in um, calculus and vectors, and these are changes in concavity or curvature. So this is a concave up, like, an op like a regular parabola, um, or an open parabola, and then this one is going to be like an upside down parabola, so this is concave down. Going from concave up to concave down is a point of inflection right in between, or a concave down to a concave up, again, a point of inflection. So another way of thinking about it is if you're going from a minimum to a maximum, then in between is going to be a POI. And then if you go from a max to a min, you're going to get another POI. Okay, I think what we should do now is uh, just go into some more details about odd and even degree functions. This is a cubic graph, and I'm just going to use that as um, a general basis for odd degree functions. So we have the general x cubed graph, we have um, a little bit more fancy, I guess, cubed graph, and then one that is, I don't know, just as fancy but different. Um, so we have all of the different graphs right here, and notice that they all start on the left-hand side in the third quadrant, and they extend to the right-hand side, which is in the first quadrant. So that's generally how x cubed graphs or odd degree functions work. This is the same as even a linear x graph 
or an x to the power of 5 graph. The only difference is you might see less or more of these max and mins in the middle. Okay, but they all extend from this direction all the way to this direction. Now, if I decided to put a negative as a leading coefficient, we should expect that it reflects over the x-axis and it goes from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4 instead. Okay, all of this information in between should be the very same for the previous graph. So let's take a look at that. Absolute max and mins. Well, none of these guys have an absolute minimum because technically these guys go on forever this way and they don't have an absolute maximum because they go on forever this way. So it should be none and none. In terms of max and mins that are local, this blue one, even though it looks like there is, I mean, there could be some sort of like a, a peak somewhere, this actually doesn't have any peaks. So there is no max or mins that are local here. However, the red and the green both have one max and one min that are local. So I put anywhere between zero to one local max and mins. Now in terms of the x-intercepts, this blue one has one x-intercept, the green one has two x-intercepts, and then the red one has three, one, two, and three, but that's the very max that you'll ever get. So again, those numbers don't really change for if we decide to flip it over the x-axis. Um, this one does look like it changed, but it's just a change in how they worded the question. So this one's asking for how many total number of max and mins together. So even though this looks like it changed, it really didn't. Okay, just to sum up, if you have a positive leading coefficient versus a negative leading coefficient for an odd degree, you're supposed to go from quadrant 3 to 1, but if you have a flip, it's going to go from 2 to 4 instead. Okay, so I have these really detailed PowerPoints given to me by a colleague. Um, I'm not going to go over everything just for time's sake, so you can always pause the video and go through them yourself afterwards, um, but there is a lot of detail that's very useful in here. Okay, so taking a look at any even degrees, so here's a quartic, a more fancy quartic, and then another fancy quartic. Um, a quartic kind of looks like a parabola, but it's kind of very flat in the middle. But notice that it can get fancier with more bumps in the middle. So if you go from a, a quartic, usually you'll see a W shape. Whereas if you went to, say, an x to the power of 6, you might get more bumps in the middle. Okay, so generally, all of the uh, positive leading coefficient quartics or even degree functions, um, it'll extend from quadrant 2 to 1. So it should start here and end over here. You should get something um, like 1 to 2 maximum, or sorry, minimum points. So notice that you could have um, an absolute minimum point right here. And if it was like a symmetrical W, you could actually get another one right over here. But then in terms of the blue, you could actually get um, only one absolute minimum. Now, absolute maximums, you shouldn't really have any because these um, arrows should continue up and up and up. I know I haven't really written the arrows there, um, but you know that they're supposed to be there. Okay. The local minimum points and the local maximum points, again, um, if this were, say, the absolute minimum, you would have at least one other minimum. Um, you could have just the one absolute minimum, um, but in terms of an, a maximum, you would probably have one to maybe no absolute, sorry, local maximums. Okay, now x-intercepts. You can have no x-intercepts because if you think about this blue parabola, or I, actually I really shouldn't say parabola because that's a quadratic, but a blue graph, if you just, um, I guess, translated it up a couple, like up to eight, it wouldn't actually touch the x-axis at all. So you could have no x-intercepts, you could have one x-intercept, you could potentially have two, so if it just went down like this, you could have three, I think that's the red one, one, two, three, or you could have four x-intercepts, like the green, one, two, three, and four. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip it upside down with a negative leading coefficient. So as expected, you should see that um, the end behavior goes from three to quadrant four, and none of this stuff should change from um, the previous slide. Okay, so these slides are just summing up 
everything that we talked about um, talks about the range a little bit. Okay, it talks about the minimum points, the maximum points, and I think it talks about oh, the number of zeros that we have as well. Okay, so we already discussed that. And let's go through a quick example and see if we can figure out one from the other. So just determining certain key features of the equations, would we be able to match them with these graphs? So something like this, x to the power of 6 graph, we should expect, oh, and a positive leading coefficient, we should expect it's probably this one. So both the end behaviors, because it was an even degree function, should go in the same direction. And since it's a positive leading coefficient, they should go up and up versus, say, this guy that's going down and down. Now, I'm expecting this one to be a negative even function. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, yeah, right here. So a negative and then an even degree. So these two, we have a negative odd degree, and this is a positive odd degree. Okay, now this looks like a regular cubed graph, so this one I would say would be the positive um, odd degree versus this one looks a little bit backwards going from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4, so this one would probably be the um, negative uh, leading coefficient odd degree function. So I'm just going to check real quick, and that's exactly what we have. Okay, so we're going to talk about more um, features in a little bit, um, but keep watching for the finite differences continuation of this video.